Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video we're going to be going over how to find the heat of vaporization of a substance uh, based upon its vapor pressure and temperature. So let's get into this. So in this problem we're given the uh, following data. So they're saying from the following data determine the enthalpy of vaporization of each metal in which metal is the bonding stronger. Okay, so here is the information they're giving us. So in the original problem, they're giving us the vapor pressure uh, in milligrams of mercury. So we got 1, 10, 100, 400, and 760 millimeters of mercury. And then they give us the temperatures of each of the substances that give this temperature, right? So for lithium, uh, at the temperature of 750, that will give you a vapor pressure of one millimeter mercury. For magnesium at 620 degrees Celsius, it'll give you a vapor pressure of one. So it's giving you the temperature of each of the metals, lithium and magnesium, that correspond to the vapor pressure uh, uh, that, that's given here. So at 10, at a vapor pressure of 10 millimeters mercury, uh, lithium, that would be at a temperature of 890 to give that vapor pressure. And for magnesium, it would be 740 to give you that vapor pressure. Okay. And so, and then this is the data that they're giving you. And they're asking us from this given data, what is the enthalpy of vaporization for each of the metals? Now, this is where you're going to need to use the clausius clapeyron equation, and that is given right here. So the clausius clapeyron equation is the uh, natural log of the pressure equal to the negative of the vapor pressure, the change in vapor pressure, uh, over the R value, the, the ideal gas law constant R, multiplied by the inverse of the temperature, one over temperature plus some constant. So what we can do, you'll notice that this is in the point slope form of the, of the equation. That would be Y equals MX plus B. So this would be your Y value. This is your slope here, right? So this here is the slope M. This would be your X value, one over uh, T for time. And then this is your, your uh, Y intercept. So the Y intercept, right? <clears throat> so this is in the point slope form. So what we could do is, since we're given the pressure here and we're given the temperature, all we need to do is take the pressure and find the natural log of each of the pressure points that they gave us, and then find the temperature one over the temperature. So find the inverse of the temperature, uh, but we need to convert that to Kelvin first. So if we could get this information, if we could get the natural log of the pressure, and the inverse of the temperature in Kelvin, then we could plot this data here using Excel. And then, of course, this would be in millimeters of mercury. The temperature would be in Kelvin. We would plot that information in Excel, and we could get the graph and then we could tell Excel to give us the equation of the slope, the equa well, the equation of the line. And then from the equation of the line, we could get the slope because the equation of the line would be in the MX, uh, Y equals MX plus B form, right? So that's what we would need to do. So they give us the pressure in millimeters of mercury. So we could take each of these values and then take the natural log of the value. So for example, if you take the natural log of one, you get zero. So here I have plotted, or not plotted, but I have calculated the natural log of the pressure that they have given us here in millimeters of mercury. 
So the natural log of 1 is 0. The natural log of 10 is 2.30. The natural log of 100 is 4.61, and so on. So I converted each of these values in millimeters of mercury to natural log. So now I have the natural log of the pressure. That's going to be my y value, right? Then what I did here is I converted each of the temperatures given for lithium and magnesium into 1 over the temperature, 1 over Kelvin, right? So they give me the temperature in degrees Celsius. So I first need to convert that to Kelvin. I didn't show that calculation, but basically what the calculation is, is I take the uh, temperature in Celsius and I just add 273.15 to each of those temperatures. So to get the Kelvin temperature for this one, I add 273.15. To get the Kelvin temperature of this one, I get add again 273.5, uh, add 273.5, and so on. So to each of these Celsius temperatures, I add 273.15. That's going to give me the Kelvin temperature. Then, once I get the Kelvin temperatures for each of these, then I take the inverse. So I take 1 and divide it by the temperature in Kelvin. So 1 divided the temperature in Kelvin will give me these values here. So I add 273.15 to 750, and then I take the inverse of that, 1 over that value, and this is what I get. So 9.78 times 10 to the negative 4. So, um, and then I, for this one, I add 273.15, and then I take the inverse of that, right? So divide that answer by, take one and divide it by that answer. Uh, and then I get 8.60 times 10 to the negative four. And then I take this value, 1080, add 273 to that. And then I take the inverse of that one divided by that value and I get 7.39 times 10 to the negative 4, and so on. So I'm basically converting these values that I got into 1 over Kelvin. And so then I get these values, and notice now that I have these values that I got from the given temperature in Celsius, I can now plot that as my x value. So I have my x value, 1 over temperature in Kelvin, so then what I do on the Excel spreadsheet is I take these values, these are going to be my Y values, and then these are going to be my X values, right? So in your uh, Excel spreadsheet, your X values usually come first. So I would put these into a column, and then my Y values would be after. So I'm going to plug these values into my Excel spreadsheet, right? And then I tell the computer, I highlight these, um, and then I, I pick the, the right graph. Maybe it's probably, it's uh, a scatter plot. Um, I, I pick a scatter plot where I get the best fit line, and I tell the computer, the Excel program, to give me the equation of the line with the R squared value and so on, and so that is going to give me my graph. Now my graph look, should look something like this, right? So I have the natural log of the millimeters of mercury on the y-axis, and then I have my one over temperature in Kelvin along the x, and I should get a negative slope, a straight line. And then of course the equation um, it's going to give me in, in the y, in the form of y equals mx plus b, and so because I'm plotting one over t in Kelvin, again this is my x value, and then this is my y value here. So that means that the slope, whatever this slope is, is going to be equal to the delta H, negative delta H over R. So once I get the slope from the line, the equation they give me, then I can set that equal to negative delta H over R, 
and then solve for the delta H. Oops, sorry, this should be vaporization, right? So let me specify that as the heat of vaporization or the enthalpy of vaporization for that particular substance. So I can get a graph and on the graph, I'm gonna have two different lines on the graph. Each line would have its own separate uh, equation. You could do two graphs. I could plot one graph with this information here and then plot the second graph on a separate graph. I don't have a, a separate line, so this and this, so I'd have two separate graphs. Or you could plot the same line to the same graph space, and so you'd have two different lines, and you could get the slope of those two different lines. And then from the slope, you could hit the, get the heat of vaporization for each of the metals, lithium and magnesium. So why don't we do that? I'll do the Excel spreadsheet. I'll show you what the equations are. You can do the Excel spreadsheet yourself and you can compare what you got with what I got as well. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Okay. So welcome back. Now you'll see here that I didn't, I'm not showing you the Excel spreadsheet. I'm hoping that you uh, know how to do that. Um, so if you plugged in the values that I have and you had the Excel spreadsheet uh, produce the graph for you and also give you the equation of the line, then you should have gotten these equations here from the Excel spreadsheet. And so again, looking at the clausius clapeyron uh, equation here, we plotted uh, the natural log of pressure in millimeters of mercury versus uh, one over the temperature, right? And so because we plotted those, our uh, equation of the line uh, matches this equation here. So uh, Y equals M. And so here, the, this is our slope M. So this is M, this is M. Right. So, and if we plot these values here, then according to the clausius clapeyron equation, our slope is equal to the negative of the delta H vaporization over R. And so all we need to do is take the slope here. So negative 19, 0, 20 is equal, going to be equal to negative of the delta H. Oops, sorry about that. <clears throat> It's going to be equal to negative delta H of vaporization over R. And what we're asked to find here is the enthalpy of vaporization. So this here, we want delta H of vaporization. So to get rid of this, we just, we have a negative there. So we're going to multiply by negative R, multiply this side by negative R, right? So then the negatives cancel out. And so then delta H of vaporization is going to be equal to negative 19,020, right? Multiplied by R. And so let's write down the units here. So this is going to be Calvin multiplied by the R value. Now the R value uh, in this case is going to be in terms of joules. So this is going to be 8.314. Uh, Let me double check that again. I don't want to flip my numbers. 314. Yep, I was right. Three. One four, and that's going to be joules per uh, mole Kelvin. So Kelvin's going to cancel out. That's going to leave us with joules over moles. And when we calculate that, we get one point six. 1.6 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole. Or if you divide this by 1,000, you get 1 1.6 or 
see that it'll be to get in the kilojoules per mole, which is typically what the units would be for uh, the delta H vaporization, but we have joules. So if we divide that by a thousand, um, we would get 160 kilojoules per mole. Now we could do the same thing with magnesium, right? We could, again, this is the slope M. So then again, we would have Delta H of vaporization equal to, oops, I forgot the negative here. So the negative there uh, would cancel out. That would be positive, right? So we get a positive value. Same thing here, we have the negative 16,692. Again, that's gonna be Kelvin multiplied by R, which is again, 8.314 joules per uh, mole Kelvin, right? So the Kelvin cancels out again, and that's gonna give us, what do we get? 1.4, so 1.4 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole. And again, if you divide by a thousand to convert joules to kilojoules, you would get 140, so 140 kilojoules per mole which is uh, the heat of vaporization. So you can see here that the heat of vaporization for magnesium is 140 kilojoules per mole, and the heat of vaporization of lithium is 160 kilojoules per mole. And so when we're asked here, which metal <clears throat> has the stronger bonding? Well, that's gonna be related to the heat of vaporization. Remember, the heat of vaporization is the amount of energy it takes to vaporize a substance, meaning um, in order to get it to a phase change from solid to, or from liquid to gas, right? So <clears throat> the stronger the bonding, the stronger the, uh, the uh, attractive forces are between particles, the more energy it's going to take to overcome those attractive forces in order to get that phase change. And so that means that uh, if, you have, if you have stronger uh, uh, interactions, stronger bonding, that means that your heat of vaporization is going to be larger. So here we have 160 kilojoules per mole for lithium, 140 kilojoules per mole for uh, magnesium. Lithium has the higher vapor pressure, the heat of vapor, uh, uh, heat of vaporization. So therefore lithium uh, has the stronger bonding. And that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, if this helped you in any way understand how to do this problem as well as any other sort of, you know, similar problems, then by all means, please like the video, share the video, hit that like button. Also, do me a solid, subscribe to the channel, help me out, hit that notification bell, click all when you do, so that way you can be notified by all the videos I put out. And finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think, ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.